Well, this past week, Queen's Health Systems issued internal emergencies for its West Oahu and Punchbowl locations because admissions outpace available staff. In just a moment, we're going to have Hilton Rathel from the uh, president and CEO of the Healthcare Association of Hawaii joining us. But uh, yeah, that was kind of scary this weekend. Yeah, this we week, were I just, think. that's right. And we were just talking to Maui Memorial Medical Center. They have actually seen an uptick in patients as well. COVID hospitalizations jumped uh, by 10 people overnight. So 36 currently in the hospital with COVID, 17 are vaccinated, five in the ICU and one's on a ventilator. So uh, we will be talking with Hilton more about um, how much equipment they have as well and what that situation is looking like. And it looks like I think we actually yeah. have him live here. If we can bring him up. Hilton, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with our technical difficulties here. Uh, so, of course, we, we actually were just talking about the situation with Queens Medical Center. Do you have an update for that from earlier this week? Well, Queens Medical Center is uh, continuing to work very, very hard to get all the staff they need and take care of all the patients they're getting. And this is affecting both Queens Punchbowl and Queens West. Fortunately, we do have staff coming in this weekend from the mainland. We have over 200 staff arriving this weekend. Some of them started arriving today. And many of these staff that are coming in this weekend will be deployed to either Queen's Punch Bowl or Queen's West. Are most of these uh, workers nurses or what type of healthcare workers are they? The majority of staff that we bring in are nurses. They're a mixture of nurses with different skill sets that can work in medical surgical units, in our telemetry units or our ICUs. We're also bringing in some respiratory therapists and we have some other healthcare personnel we're bringing in as well. And to talk about, you know, of course, we know that hospitals are overwhelmed, staff are shorthanded. Has the situation escalated or gotten worse since the last time we spoke to you about this last week? Well, our, uh, hospital counts have gone up since from a week ago. Today, we had 346 COVID hospitalizations in our hospitals. 41 of those are in our ICU. Our total census today is 2,337 across the state. So that census is about the same as what it was last week. So that's good news, but that's still a lot of patients. So we have a lot of COVID patients and we also have a very large number of other types of patients that are in our hospitals for a variety of reasons. And in terms of, you know, ventilators and oxygen and supplies like that, how are we, where do we stand in our hospitals or do we need more of that? Well, we're very fortunate that with the Omicron surge that patients in our hospitals are less sick than they were during the Delta surge. And so the number of COVID patients in our ICUs and, uh, right now is much lower than it was during the Delta surge. And that was what was one of the things that was really stretching our resources because patients in ICUs, uh, there are a lot more people on ventilators, you're using a lot more oxygen. And also the staffing ratios are higher because you could have one-to-one -one staffing ratios or one-to-two staffing ratios in the ICU. So, Fortunately, we have plenty of ventilators right now. We have sufficient oxygen in the state. We are monitoring it very closely. We're working very closely with air gas, which is a dominant supplier of medical oxygen in the state. And we're working with them to ensure that we do have sufficient oxygen supplies. So the biggest issue continues to be staffing, but fortunately, in terms of PPE, drugs, ventilators, and oxygen, we're doing very well. And you mentioned staffing. You said about 250 this week. We eventually will have, what, 900 or so? Is that what the number was? The request that we have put into FEMA was for a total of 955 staff starting on January 10 of this week. So we did have a January 10 um, starting this week. So we did have some staff um, that did, did arrive last weekend in anticipation of this FEMA funding, we're still waiting for the final official word. We believe we will get it early next week that this round of funding has been approved. But there is a total of 955 staff that we can bring into the state if necessary. Now, we will only bring them in if necessary, but between this weekend and next weekend, we will bring in over 500 personnel in addition to the approximately 200 personnel who are already on the island. Earlier in the show, we ran a report that uh, some medical officials think that the peak 
will finally happen later this month in a week or so. Are you of the same ilk? Do you think that will happen? Well, it is a little hard to say, but uh, because this pandemic has surprised us on many occasions, but there are indications that the positivity rate and the daily infection rate has peaked. Now that's just indications, we don't know for sure. Now, if that's true, that means though that the hospitalization rate will continue to rise or the number of COVID hospitalizations will continue to rise because that always continues to go up even after you get the peak in the infection rate and the positivity rate. So right now, we believe that the last part of this month or the end of January, hospitals will continue to be very, very full, but we are hopeful that by the time we get into February, we will be through the peak of this surge and February will still be challenging for us, but we're hoping that by mid-February or toward the end of February, we will in, be in much better shape here in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, we definitely are hoping for that and rooting for you as well. Um, is there any other you know, mitigations that hospitals are taking to kind of help with the staffing shortage as, as, we, as we see more people in the hospital? Well, one of the things we're doing is expanding our uh, emergency room capability. So we have deployed tent systems at some of the hospitals, at Queen's Punchbowl, at Straub, and at Polymomi. So that is allowing us to expand the amount of space we have to triage patients when they come into the emergency room. So, and fortunately, a lot of the staff who uh, in the last few weeks have gone out sick because of exposure to COVID, or because of a positive test. We're starting to get some of those back. We still have many hundreds of staff out because the infection rate in the community is still around 20%, even higher in some pockets. So, but we, you know, we still have a very few tough weeks in front of us, but we have been through a pandemic before. We have been through the surge before, surges before. And so we're learning through each surge how better hand, how to handle it and how better to treat it. So we, we are optimistic that we can get through this surge, um, even though it will be challenging over the next few weeks. Kind of the silver lining in all of this. Well, Hilton Raithel, President and CEO, CEO of the Healthcare Association of Hawaii, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us tonight. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome.